interesting look. Compare, for example, all of the crowns recently, and we'd get a more interesting comparison. But any one of these photos, the crowd or the lack of a crowd, is accurate, but it may not be true. What does that image seem to represent? Boredom? Disinterest? In fact, it was an, about an hour and a half prior to the event. Yeah. All right. Here's one. Uh, you gunners, you're going to love this one. Uh, I'm going to show you the trailer from uh, a documentary a couple weeks ago. Let me ask you another question. If there are no background checks for gun purchasers, how do you prevent felons or terrorists from purchasing a gun? What did that imply in a few seconds of, it's like, oh my god, what a great question. I never thought that thought, right? Um, a few days prior to the film coming out, they did a, a talk, that's Katie Kirk, they did a talk um, at a university to explain what they were trying to do with this documentary. There is, as Robin said in the film, this huge swath of people, this silent majority of individuals, the 74% of NRA members who support universal background checks, who were absolutely perplexed when we told them that you could be on the terror watch list and legally buy a gun in this country, it's a pretty fair documentary. I mean, I think that people are going to find fault with it, but I feel very comfortable that we did a responsible job of pre presenting the facts. So the producer and director. Who were asked the other day, is this an advocacy documentary? And I said, we're just advocating a conversation. You know, if these facts, you know, help you feel a certain way about the issue or, or solidify a belief, then, then that's great. But all we wanted to do was present the facts. Did you now? <laughs> what actually happened is this. I'm going to play the audio of the actual interview unedited. If there are no background checks, how do you prevent, I know how you all are going to answer this, but I'm asking anyway. If there are no background checks for gun purchasers, how do you prevent felons or terrorists from walking in to say a licensed gun dealer and purchasing a gun? Well, one, if, if you're not in jail, you should... What'd you notice? There's no eight second delay. Right. There's no eight second delay. So what happened was is they edited in some silence and some people looking at each other so as to say, wow, never really thought about that. That's a really great question. It didn't happen. What I hope you're picking up here are a couple of things. One, we've looked at political commercials that obviously use music and images, lights, shadows, camera angles, quotes. We've talked about wording that they use in commercials, where they come up with those pull quotes, the images of Obama wearing the tuxedo and laughing. We've talked about images, for example, that are fake, images that are altered. Everybody wants a piece of you right now. Because your vote matters that much. Your vote matters so much that they're willing to spend all of this effort to get your attention, to get your vote. And I've already heard some of you say, I am so sick of this election. I am so over this election. I cannot wait for this election to end. Gird yourself. <laughs> Don't check out. Get steely and start demanding some answers instead of nonsense. Now's the time for you to buck up, because it's getting ready to get crazy. And don't give in. We have, and I have the great privilege of working with people all over the world, we have the democracy that the rest of the world wants. The confusion that's caused by free speech, the confusion that's caused by all of the freedoms that we have is what makes our government so messy and so wonderful. The fact of the matter is, we're getting ready to make some really important choices.
both on the federal level and on the state level, we're getting ready to make some, at the local level, we're getting ready to make some really interesting choices. And half, more than half, of all those eligible to vote won't even bother. I don't understand it. If you're not excited now, what could we possibly do to make you more excited? Yeah, I, I, I'm so, I cannot wait for this to get going. Here's the thing. Protect against being cynical. I'm encouraging you to be critical. Critical means I'm open to evidence. I'll make my decision based on evidence. But I'm not going to be so cynical that I believe that everybody's a liar, that everybody's a thief, that every Democrat's bad, every Republican's a liar, every public. Stop it. Just stop it. That's not true. There are public servants of all political party who deserve our respect and, re and deserve our attention and, re and they deserve our honor. That is true. And there are some in every party who deserve to be in prison. That's true as well. Stop painting everybody that way and start opening your eyes to truth. Be willing. Be willing to be open to truth. I think that's our civic duty. Some of you are veterans and you've paid a very serious price. And we thank you for making it possible for us to vote. But we have a responsibility. I saw a hand or two and then we're going to uh, call a call a close. Go ahead. Uh, um, PolitiFact is an interesting one. Now, I revealed previously that I do have some connection with them, but let me tell you how they do what they do. I don't work for them. What they do that I really like is they show you how they came to their decision. And so they will give you the evidence, they'll link you to the evidence that made the foundation of their decision. They also, before they make their decision, go to the originating source and say, this is what we have found, is there any response to that? I appreciate that. They also, on occasion, go back and reconsider when new evidence arises. They have, on occasion, reconsidered the evidence to say, we've changed our ruling on that. Instead of being mostly false, now it's only half true. <laughs> um, it's rare that there's much of a change, but there are sometimes changes. I appreciate that. Um, I wish they would play those changes a little higher. I wish they would call attention to them. But um, I appreciate that about PolitiFact. Snopes is a little more difficult because we don't always get all of the details about how they made their decisions. Snopes tends not to be gradient either. It tends to be yes, no, or we don't know. Uh, but it's a great place to start. I mean, if, if, if the decision is, do I just take somebody's word for it or do I go to Snopes? Sure, that's a great place to start. Um, start searching for truth would be my would be my push to. I'm going to repeat what you say for the audience. Okay. One of the recent political ads that you saw troubled you. Uh, where Hillary Clinton was giving a campaign speech and she said, and we aren't going to raise taxes on the middle class. Yeah, the middle class. So Hillary Clinton, you remember the ad is saying, we're not going to raise taxes on the middle class. Right. And the, the soundbite and the opposition uh, uh, advertising as, as her saying, right. we are going to Right. Part of the issue would be, who do you consider to be middle class? You know, most of us consider ourselves middle class, and most of you aren't middle class. Most of you are way above middle class. Middle class is way lower than you think it is. Um, so, part of the issue is, what do you mean by that? Um, I'm not going to raise taxes on the middle class. It's a little bit like, um, I'm not in favor of social programs. Well, what do you mean by social programs? Does that include Medicare? Does that include Social Security? What does that include? Veterans hospitals? I mean, what do you mean by social programs? And so when you say, I'm not going to raise taxes on the middle class, the question would be, well, who are you going to raise taxes on? Just give us your plan. I guess Trump was supposed to do that today, right? Did he, did he, did he do it? Did he do it? Can anybody give it to me in the sound bite? No. Um, so we're going to have to start figuring out, you know, what's this deal? And does it make any sense? And so on. So, you know, um, 
And part of the question is, is sort of how do each of us individually get affected by that, and are we willing to do that? Because none of us wants to pay more taxes, right? None. Nobody does. I want you to pay more taxes. I don't want me to pay more taxes. Well, my, well, my point is that opposition ran a recording of that yeah. Okay, but see, we see, we see how those sorts of things can be done. Now, we have to consider the possibilities. One possibility is, is she actually did say, I'm going to tax you like you have never been taxed before. Another possibility is, is that she said something and it was edited in such a way, like we just saw in the Gundy's, that she said words, but not in that order, or there was something that was taken out, which is probably more likely. Um, so I think it's highly unlikely that she probably said the words, I'm going to raise taxes on the middle class. She didn't say that. Well, that's not, that's not what happened. The explanation was linguistic. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. The explanation that I read was linguistic, that she had to say aren't, she did say aren't, and intended to say aren't because that was what was in her script, but the NT did not read, you know, to our ears when she said it. And uh, I don't know who has, who's Here's the thing. All of these candidates are going to be in front of us so many times. Gather a body of evidence. Any one of us can say anything at one time, be recorded and edited and published. All I would say is, over time, do we see a pattern that this is what they promise? That otherwise we end up just sort of nitpicking every single thing anybody says and that's not helpful either. Look for a pattern and see if that pattern fits with what you want in an elected official. That'd be my recommendation. Go ahead. One of the best shows I've seen in a very long time is Newsroom on HBO. Yeah, the, news, the Newsroom on HBO, yeah. <laughs> and um, it was funny because the only thing that I kept thinking the whole time I was watching it was, even though it's factual because it's a story and it's television. Right. By the way, it's not like any newsroom I've ever worked in. <laughs> but it was just... Produ the executive producer is in love with the anchor who has yeah, total control. It, it was definitely you know, yeah. romanticized, but um, it was interesting though how how stories were developed. Yeah. You know, and, and even though it was fictional, it was just interesting to me. Yeah, it's an it, uh, yeah. Movies so. about the news business are always fun because sources always talk and they always have the juiciest information <laughs> and you know it's always lock solid great. Yeah. And the anchors or the or the, or the reporters are always heralds and all that. All of that. Uh, that's not usually the way it works. But. Uh, sure. And do you have that in writing? The method to do the photo search. I tell you what I'll do. I wrote. If you will email me, and I'll do this for anybody. If you'll email me, Tompkins at pointer.org, I will save your metadata and send you scammy letters. No, I'm kidding. I'll, 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 I'll just, I'll just, uh, I'll just do a quick little do this, do this, do this, do this, and send it to you. Um, here's quickly what you'll do. You just take the photo, and I'm assuming that you don't have Photoshop. So you go to Jeffrey's Viewer, drop the photo into Jeffrey's Viewer, and that's all you got to do, and it'll search for you. Um, if you uh, so that's the easiest, the simplest thing is just to drop it into Jeffrey's viewer. But if you send me an email, I'll just do like a step-by-step, -step, like a five-step thing, and I'll just walk you right through. Yes, Tompkins, T-O-M-P-K-I-N-S, at pointer, P-O-Y-N-T-E-R, dot org, pointer, dot org. I probably have a card. Uh, I do. Awesome. I'll get you a card after it's over. Uh, but, you know, Part of our job is to help journalists, but part of our job is to help the public as well. So I'm happy to help you. One last one. That drone clip made me think about something. Has Fox News ever been sued the way Gawker was recently sued and now is going back? I don't know if anybody's been sued the way Gawker was sued. But I mean, some of these stories that Fox... Well, it's not against the law to be wrong. <laughs> it's not. It's just not. Uh, Lord knows, I'm sure I have reported something wrong in my career. So it's not, it's not against the law to be wrong. It's not against the law. Um, so who would sue you? I mean, in the drone case, who would sue you? The cows? I mean, there's nobody to sue you. There, there's nobody to prove any harm. Abuse on, well, you would have to say, I now duck every time I see an airplane, you know, and then I'm, now I'm nuts. And, no, I'll wear a tin hat. And so, uh, 
I mean, the problem is, is that, you know, you'd have to prove so much stuff, you'd be crazy. Um, so it'd be very, very, very difficult to figure out some kind of way that somebody could do that. And I'm not in favor of that. And I don't mean to be bashing Fox. We could just as easily do almost anybody and find just as many crazy examples. Um, because there's a lot of craziness. But what I would say to you is, you're partly responsible for holding the sources of news that you watch accountable. And if they prove not to be worth your time, stop watching them. I mean, just stop or demand better. You deserve better. You deserve better. Um, and you'll show that with your feet, you will, or with your channel changer. Okay. We do it at home, changing channels. But if we want to go beyond that, what do we do? Raise hell. I can tell you're a hell raiser. Raise hell. I mean, you can't. Just demand more. Um, you know, yeah, you, call, you hear something on the air that's obviously wrong. Call them. Just call them. It's great fun. I, I was a news director. I used to get these calls all the time. People would call them. I hate her necklace. I would get this all the time. They can stop wearing that tie. The tie makes my television buzz. I get that all the time. I would get that all the time. But you're sounding like, what good does that do that? If I write call you and say... I tell you, here's the thing. Um, you'd be amazed at how seriously newsrooms take that kind of feedback. You'd be amazed. Um... Because they're just people too, and you get enough calls, you know that something's going on. You'd be amazed. And a good old letter, there's nothing like a letter. Email is one thing, writing on Facebook is another thing. But a good old letter, boy, that's a really, really powerful tool. It really is. You'd be amazed. And when you can get something really viral on Facebook or get something really rolling, you'd be amazed. So, just don't give up. You're more powerful. I heard that because of Homeland Security now, they don't like us to send mail. Mail, mail. They love for you to send mail. The U.S. Mail Service wants you to send mail. <laughs> because, because they don't get enough mail. No. They love for you to send mail. Just don't put any power in it. Okay? So, I, mean, it's, I mean, it's just craziness. Homeland Security doesn't like mail. Come on. Homeland Security doesn't care if you ship mail. They just care if you put that stuff in and bombs and stuff. Yeah, so you have to ship the mail. Now, one thing that is true, if you send mail to a congressman, it still goes to um, it still goes to a sorting facility. In con that is true. It goes to a sorting facility to see if there's any uh, rice in it or whatever. But, um, so yeah, that does happen. It does take a while. If you mail to your congressman, Yeah, call. Yeah, call. All right. I'm not going anywhere, so I'll be hanging around. Thanks for oh, yeah. I want to thank Al for sharing that important information with us in such a fun and interactive way. And I think all of the kinds of technology and um, activities that are going on show us that we need to think critically and um, act ethically, looking to maintain our ethical fitness um, each and every day. So um, as we go forward, um, one of the uh, key quotes that I remember is that the 21st century challenges are going to be learning to learn, learning to choose, and learning to relate. Uh, because everything is changing um, all of the time around us, so we just have to stay aware. I want to thank you all for uh, helping us to keep ethics on the front burner here in Palm Beach County. We had some evaluation forms out there. If you didn't pick one up and you care to fill one out, share your feedback with us and let us know if there are any other speakers or topics uh, you'd like for us to cover. Stay tuned, we're going to be um, offering another series of the Ethics Connection Program in September. Um, also, we're gonna have another forum like this on September 21st, if you'd like to mark it down. We're going to be looking at ethics and sports uh, with 
Fred Ng, who is the executive director of the National Association of Youth Sports. So that'll be interesting. And then in April, we're going to be celebrating Palm Beach County Ethics Month. And we're going to have a number of other activities going on. So uh, we've got lots of things planned for the future, and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank what, you again. What for time? On September 27th.